What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Nissan Frontier SV, courtesy of Younger Nissan in Frederick, Maryland. For more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we are in this one because this is a relatively affordable pickup truck from nissan it competes with the toyota tacoma honda ridgeline and ford ranger just to name a few so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and size you can imagine there are a couple different configurations for the frontier sv first one being the king cab 4x2 going for thirty two thousand four hundred and seventy dollars which is a modest 580 dollars bump from the 2023 model year then you have the crew cab 4x2 going for thirty three thousand eight seventy then there is the crew cab long bed 4x4 for thirty nine thousand seven hundred dollars and so with the pricing for those first two configurations yes 4x4 is available just simply add three thousand dollars to either of those prices but regardless of the configuration you go with, the power plant on the Frontier SV is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 3.8 liter direct injected V6, putting out 310 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 281 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM, power being sent to the rear wheels or all wheels through a 9-speed automatic, 0-60 to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.5 seconds. That's plenty respectable for what this vehicle is. With MPG numbers coming in at 18 in the city, 24 on the highway for the rear-wheel drive, 17 city 22 then on the highway for the four wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the frontier here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 nissan frontier here up to speed all right just pulling out onto the road here in three two one go it's not bad <laughs> that's pretty quick I gotta be honest, for a pickup truck, that's pretty quick. Zero to 60 is 7.5 seconds. That is plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto any type of highway. So honestly, for what this vehicle is, that's perfectly fine. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And yes, the braking is equally impressive, actually. Of course, four-wheel ventilated disc brakes do come standard, but the braking feel 100% on the firm side. Why is that? 60 is your stopping distance, comes in at 115 feet. That is a sport sedan number. Typically with trucks, you find 130s. Uh, with regular sedans, you find 120s. 115 feet is like Genesis G70 or like an Audi sport sedan or something like that. So why Nissan put that kind of brake on the front here i have no idea but i love it the braking feels absolutely wonderful so kudos to you nissan you crushed it with that then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back overslung multi-leaf rear suspension front stabilizer bar as well then if you were to go with the crew cab you will get also a rear stabilizer bar to go along with all that as far as ride quality goes it's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today and i will say frederick has some pretty punishing roads but so far so good i'm I'm just going to put it that way as far as steering feel goes that's one you're not going to believe until you actually drive the frontier it is the heaviest steering feel on a pickup truck and i think i said this before so i personally love it it's just something that you got to get used to if you're not used to driving with that heavy of a steering feel because it is such a heavy steering feel it's almost as if there's no power steering although there is I'm just saying it's a very heavy steering feel, which is pretty cool. Less heavy at higher speeds, but at lower speeds, you can definitely tell. But anyways, as far as cabin noise goes, that has actually been perfectly fine as well on my short little test drive here today. Not a heck of a lot of wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin, so no issues there. And touching on rear visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine on my rear view mirror here. In typical truck fashion, you're not going to have any issues there either. But... That pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Nissan Frontier SV. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Nissan Frontier finished in tactical green. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Frontier is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number one, indicating that the new 2024 Frontier is built and assembled here in the US. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front. Gloss metallic front grille does come standard. You're gonna get some steel front skid plates coming standard for the Frontier SV as well. I gotta love that. Front tow hooks are gonna come with the crew cab long bed. Otherwise, they are going to be optional. 
To the sides, halogen headlights do come standard on the Frontier SV. They come with the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Automatic high beams are going to be optional if you wanted those. And then LED daytime running lights also going to be optional. But cool thing is just below those headlights, fog lights are going to come standard on the crew cab. LED fog lights are going to be optional if you wanted a little added illumination at night there. But one last thing I wanted to mention in the front is you do get some frontier lettering found on the upper portion of that front grille just in front of the hood. So thought that was a nice little accent to this one as well. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the frontier. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, rear privacy glass does come standard. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard as well. Heated side mirrors though are going to be optional king cab or crew cab configurations of course in case you were curious we do have the crew cab with us here today so we'll be testing out that rear legroom in a little bit here but then take a look down at the wheel setup 17 inch six spoke aluminum alloys will come standard and then running boards are optional for the crew cab we don't have them with us here today so for reference i guess here's a shot of me getting in and out of the actual frontier here so i personally didn't need them maybe if you're a little shorter individual i'm six feet tall you may i don't know it was perfectly fine for me though but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one you are going to find some frontier lettering found on that rear tailgate big and bold letters of course led taillights actually do come standard on the frontier i love that didn't expect to find that added illumination at night there you do have some trim level badging of course back there and whether or not you have the four-wheel drive version as well of course but there is also a nice little towing setup here with some connectors and uh, towing capacity by the way comes in at 6,270 pounds in case you plan on doing any towing with the frontier and then just below it all there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away down there on the passenger side so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around to the back of the frontier when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is an easy lower tailgate so it's not going to come crashing down on you so i did like that but as far as the bed length goes it comes in at 73.3 inches the bed width comes in at 61.4 inches between the wheel wells 44.5 inches in case you were curious about the specs of that payload capacity 1600 pounds again in case you were curious spray on bed liner is going to be optional 120 volt power outlet also going to be optional we do have a couple of those options there so i did love to see that overhead cargo bed lighting is going to come standard but that led bed lighting is going to be optional once again we had that option as well so it's a very very nice setup here in the bed of this particular frontier that we have today so then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 26.2 inches for the king cab however like i said we have the crew cab that comes in at 33.2 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there another cool thing about the rear seats of course in typical truck fashion is they are a 60 40 split flip up bench seat so if you have a massive or a great dane or something you could put him back there so that's pretty cool rear center armrest with cup holders is going to come standard on our crew cab that we have here today usb a and usb c charging ports back there 120 volt power outlet as well and of course you got the sliding rear window for the crew cab at least it is a manual sliding rear window but still nonetheless it's pretty stinking cool that it's back there but then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the king cab six-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar for the crew cab cloth seating does come standard either way but leather seating is optional for the crew cab as well as heated seats also being optional for the crew cab overall as far as seat comfort goes it was okay i'll put it that way the seats were the most comfortable seats i've ever tested because there are some horizontal seams that did create some awkward pressure points but other than that most vehicles do have that but vertical seams are the way to go nissan if you're really thinking of comfort but let's take a look at the steering wheel it is not telescoping it is tilt but i did want to emphasize that as far as finding my perfect driving position it was okay 
I made it work, but for taller individuals that have to put their seat back a little bit further, just know that you're gonna have to extend your arms possibly a little further as well, because again, it is not telescoping. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Nissan logo on the top, lock, unlock. That circular button is your remote start that goes for $375 if you wanted that option, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start coming standard. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center, which you can control by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there. That gives you things like a digital speedometer, of course, trip A, trip B. There's some really cool off-road statistics. That's probably what I would leave it on. I think that's pretty stick and cool. Got some uh, auxiliary gauges displayed up there. There's also your fuel information, uh, radio information, safety features, tire pressure indicator for each individual tire always love seeing that so outside temperature how many miles you have left pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to be optional for the crew cab we don't have that option unfortunately however we do have an overhead sunglass holder that will come standard that's pretty cool home link controls go for 110 dollars if you wanted those dual zoom climate control coming standard on the crew cab wireless phone charger is going to be optional on the crew cab but if you don't get that wireless phone charger just the front of the shifter you do have a uh, rubberized storage you can always put yourself in there beside the shifter there you got your dual cup holders a little more rubberized storage behind those cup holders another cell phone perhaps and within the center armrest you actually do have a decent amount of storage in there and some little slots for pens and pencils and uh permanent markers and whatnot on the back side of that center armrest as well so Overall, everything is finished kind of to the point, pretty basic for the most part, but I do like the chrome door handles. Most manufacturers, I think, would have left them as like a matte black, so that's pretty cool. And you do have a little bit of rubberized storage just above the uh, infotainment screen here, so another little added touch there. But speaking of the infotainment screen, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Eight inch color touchscreen display does come standard. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming along with that. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Factory navigation system is gonna be optional. You can and of course check out your radio information up there as well so when it comes to the sound systems you're going to find six speakers coming standard however there is an optional 10 speaker fender sound system available for the crew cab we don't have that option with us here today so we do got the six speaker sound system so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one it's actually not bad that was a ton of bass for six speakers i always say this nissan crushes it with their bass no matter what sound system they have in their vehicles whether it be an upgraded or a standard sound system they always do a really good job with that clarity was just okay it's not bad it'll get the job done but the bass is really where it's at i'm surprised anyways last thing i want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the frontier in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but there is an available technology package it goes for 990 dollars and that essentially gives you all the advanced safety that you may be looking for that includes lane departure warning blind spot warning rear cross traffic alert rear sonar system rear automatic braking high beam assist that's what i was mentioning to you guys with the headlights they're optional with that package and adaptive cruise control then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the frontier i still do like the design i think it looks dang good great steering feel i love a heavy steering feel i know that's not for everybody but personally i love a heavy steering feel i think that's amazing speaking of amazing the braking 60 to 0 and 115 feet that's a sports sedan number like i said and that is incredible especially for a pickup truck as far as room for improvement goes this steering wheel is not telescoping and uh if you want telescoping steering wheel i guess you can go with the titan because i knew that one is but i don't know why for whatever reason nissan didn't make the steering wheel telescoping that's just odd also, LED headlights should come standard in this day and age when you can get LED headlights standard across the board for cars like a Corolla or a Civic and things like that. They should definitely come standard on a $40,000 Frontier as well, in my personal opinion. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Frontier in the comment section below. 
that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold